Hey guys, back again with another one of my old laptops. This is another one of the batch of 14. Are you getting sick of these yet? I think I am. Because this one is an Acer for a change. I don't have a charger for this one either, so I can't try it with the board in, you know, on, all intact. But what I can say is that this is an Acer E5511 series. The motherboard apparently has a fault on this as well. So I'm going to take it out. I'm going to take pictures of it and we're going to have a look at it on screen. And this is our motherboard scanned in. So the first thing I want to do here is I want to get power onto this board to see what's going on with it. Since I don't have the original power adapter, I'm going to have to provide power with my DC power supply. So if I zoom in on the DC input section, you can see here, this is where our power adapter normally connects in. So what I need to do is I need to find the ground and I need to find out where to inject our 19 volts. Just a side note on this, you might notice that there's a lot of work been done here on this. I had to remove this high profile adapter that was connected into the board in order to be able to use it with my flatbed scanner. So that's what this is about here. This has nothing to do with the original fault. This is just where I desoldered that interface. Okay, so the question is, where do we inject our power? I'm gonna introduce my red probe here for pointing purposes. Well, as you can see, the Acer connection here only has four pins on it. So if I zoom in here, what you can see is two of these pins are connected together. They appear to go across an inductor onto a first MOSFET, then down here and onto a second MOSFET, through that second MOSFET and onto a current sense resistor. Is this beginning to look a bit familiar to everybody? Well, that should be where our 19 volts comes in, goes through an inductor, to our first MOSFET, which is usually an AC FET, to our second FET, which is an uh, RB FET, reverse blocking FET, and then onto this current sense resistor right here. And from this point on, with these older laptops, this is usually our main power rail. So what I'm thinking we should do here is use this for our ground, because ground is everywhere, but this one is just more convenient, and inject 19 volts at this point here. So let me show you what that looks like. Now that we've identified where to inject, I introduce my DC power supply. I set it to 19 volts, which is what is specified on the back of the laptop. And I'm just gonna be on the safe side here, so I'm gonna set a current limit of 0.5 of an amp. With that configured on my DC power supply, I connect my black wire to our ground, and I connect my red wire to our DC input jack, the pot where the 19 volts comes in. And when I did that, this is what happened on the laptop. These are the two wires from my power supply connected to the motherboard. And this is what my power supply is doing with that power connected. So I've got it set to 19 volts, but you can see it flickering there. It's trying to draw current, see it going up to 12 milliamps there and back to zero. 12 milliamps and back to zero. Seems like it is trying to start up and it's shutting itself down because it sees a fault. As we observed on the previous part of the video, when I inject power at the DC input jack, the laptop appears to start to draw current and then immediately shuts down. So I think there's a problem on our main 19 volt power rail. Just in case it's unclear here, I'm going to mark out the path that our voltage takes on the input. So what we have is our DC input jack here. It should go through this inductor, through the first MOSFET, through the second MOSFET, and onto our current sense resistor. And this is then our main power rail here. So what I want to check is to see if there is a short on our main power rail. With the power turned off, and my multimeter in diode mode, which looks like this on my multimeter. I place my red probe to ground, and I take my black probe, and I place it to my current sense resistor right here. And when I do that, I get a reading of 0 0.361. So that is a bit of a surprise. There is no short on our main power rail. So guess what we're gonna do next? Well, what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to bypass these two MOSFETs here, this one and this one, and I'm now going to inject the 19 volts directly onto the board at the current sense resistor, and we'll see what happens there. So let me show you how I set that up. 
I've introduced my DC power supply once again. I've set it to 19 volts and I've set a current limit of 0.5 of an amp. That's really just for safety. I don't want to introduce my voltage onto the board here and possibly have it pulling 5 amps through a short somewhere down one of the secondary circuits. So I'm going to set that limit of 0.5 amps for the moment. That should be well enough to bring our 3.3 volts and 5 volts always on power rails online anyway. So with that set, I connect my black wire to ground, I connect my red wire to my current sense resistor and when I did that what I found was that my power supply drew 0.175 amps. Now that seems like it's way too much because we're not even powering it on at this stage and we shouldn't need a fifth of an amp to bring my 3.3 volts and 5 volts always on online on a laptop like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that connected and I'm going to touch around the board and just see is anything getting warm. The board with the power connected, I found that this section up here beside PU401 started to get warm. So I couldn't work out if it was one of the capacitors or if it was the IC itself. So I decided to douse it in a bit of lighter fluid and see what happened. And I've got a video of that next. This is PU401 and as you can see I've doused the entire area in lighter fluid. So as I let the video play you'll see what happens when I turn the power on. See how the alcohol very very quickly evaporates from this IC itself. There's still some alcohol on the other components around it but it seems to evaporate most quickly from this. I've just switched off the power there for a second just so I can show it again. So once again when I switch the power back on see how quickly it evaporates so it looks like it's an issue with the IC itself let's find out from the schematic what that IC is for I've found the schematic and I've located PU401 so what does PU401 do? well on its input it accepts B plus voltage and B plus voltage is how they refer to the main 19 volt power rail on this so that comes in through an inductor PL401 which is PL401 here so the 19 volts comes in here that is coming on to pin 8 of PU401 and then on the other side we have our output which comes out to PL402 which is PL402 right here and that is our 3 volts always on power. So there's a problem with this IC. Now my problem is I'm not sure if I have one of these. It's down here as being an SY8208BQNC. So my first thing I want to do is I want to replace that, but I'm just going to see if I have one on any of my other laptops. Okay, I've checked and I don't appear to have PU401, this IC here, on any of the other motherboards. But before I consider sending away for it, what I want to do is I want to make sure that there is no short on the other side of this. This has obviously gone wrong for a reason, but uh, I can send away and buy a replacement but I want to just check and make sure that on the output of this that we don't have any problem as well because it can be the case sometimes that if there's a shorted component on the output it pulls too much current through this IC and then blows it. Now we have our 3.3 volts always on here that goes off to a number of different parts of the circuit so what I've done is I've desoldered the jumper here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my multimeter again with the power off put it into diode mode and check and see if there's a short here. Then I introduce my multimeter in diode mode, I place my red probe to a ground which we're going to get off the RAM socket here and I place my black probe to the other side of this connection. Okay so I'm placing my probe onto this side not this side. So when I place my probe here I find that my multimeter measures 0 0.002. So there's actually a short on the 3 volt always on power rail as well. So this is becoming a bit of a rabbit hole but what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and inject 3.3 volts there and see if anything heats up. I set my power supply to 3.3 volts I connected the black wire to ground which I got from a dim socket here and I connected my red wire to the other side of the jumper and when I did that the laptop drew 0 0.8 of an amp. 
With the power supply still connected, I touched around the board to see if I could find whatever shorted component might be heating up. However, nothing was heating up at all. Um, if I'd had one of those thermal detection guns, it might have helped me to flush it out more easily. But with tr injecting 3.3 volts and with the motherboard drawing 0 0.8 of an amp, this wasn't enough for whatever shorted components to generate enough heat for me to be able to detect it by touching around the board. I've touched around every component on this board and I cannot feel anything heating up at all. Now I know it's only a small amount, what is it, it'd be less than, what about 3 watts? But I cannot feel anything heating up at all. And of course I don't want to increase the voltage to 5 volts because every component on this is designed to be on a 3.3 .3 volt rail so is it going to be the case that if I inject 5 volts I would blow one of those components because it can't take 5 volts so I'm not really sure what to do with this here guys maybe you could put down in the suggestions below where you think we should step with this next like I said I hate leaving these as a cliffhanger um, but I've only a finite amount of time and this may have taken me about 10 hours to put this video together by between working on the board and doing the stuff in Photoshop so it takes a long time. Maybe it might be a better idea for me instead of trying to rush out one every week to take a bit more time and do a bit more in depth um, and a bit more of a comprehensive one with a result uh, and post that every month. But I'm going to leave that there for this week. Uh, post your comments below where do we take this one next I'm injecting 3.3 volts it's pulling 0 0.8 amps nothing is heating up I don't have a thermal gun You're, somebody below and I was going to suggest that I get one of these thermal detection tools but I don't really want to do that either because that then moves the channel away from being sort of a learning channel and into a more professional channel I suppose because all of these tools are really useful but they do cost money and they're not going to be available to the average person i'm going to stop rambling i'll leave it at that post any comments you have down below and i'll see you next week